Good morning. This is February 8, 2023. It is 9 o'clock and we are ready to begin council time with the Clark County Council. Uh, we'll start, of course, with, um, as we always do, public comment if there is any comment on an agenda item. Staff, do you see anyone online or in the hearing room to testify? Councilor, yes, we have one individual in the hearing room. Chair okay. Barman, if I may. Chair Barman, this is Leslie Lopez, if I may, before we begin. I do have one amendment to the agenda. If we could uh, do that real quick. Let's do, and um, to the person who's going to testify, I just wanted to mention that we do amendments first so that everyone is real clear what is on the agenda, since your testimony is on the agenda items. So thank you, Leslie. Thank you, Chair Barman. Uh, the amendment that I request is to remove one of the executive session items, and that is the first one, which is the pending litigation for 20 minutes. Hmm. It'll be moved to next week's council time. I see. So we are down to two executive sessions for today, totaling 30 minutes. That is correct. Thank you. And I trust that no one objects to that change. Okay. Uh, please go ahead and testify. Can you hear me now? Good morning, counselors. My name is Nancy Schultz and I reside in Vancouver. At least two of you want the NAACP to rewrite their proposed proclamation celebrating Black History Month. You have decided the current version is divisive, combative, and not uplifting. In fact, you want them to rewrite the history of racism in this country. You want to whitewash that history. I've written what I believe would be acceptable to you, whereas many black Americans have made significant contributions to many fields in the United States, we want to recognize the achievements of Satchel Paige, Hank Aaron, and Muhammad Ali. We recognize the contributions of James Baldwin, Toni Morrison, and Maya Angelou. We recognize the talents of Billie Holiday and Louis Armstrong Jr. We're thankful for Sidney Poitier and William Bojangles Robinson. I'm sorry to be so tearful as well as the soprano, Marian Anderson. We recognize the contributions of John Lewis, Barack Obama, and the Reverend Martin Luther King. However, we do not want to remember that black entertainers had to enter theaters through a black-only entrance, that both Satchel Paige and Henry Aaron had to play ball in segregated ball clubs, that Muhammad Ali, who was a conscientious objector, was stripped of his boxing titles because of his politics, that James Baldwin had to leave this country because he was a gay black man and he had to go to France to find freedom to live. Both Maya Angelou's and Toni Morrison's books have been banned in many states. We recognize that Sidney Poitier was a civil rights activist, that Bojangles Robinson was prohibited from holding the hand of the white little girl Shirley Temple when they made a movie. We remember when Mary Anderson, soprano, was prohibited by the Daughters of the American Revolution from singing in a federal building because she was black and had to perform before a crowd of 75,000 people on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. And we remember and especially recognize that John Lewis was beaten by white police officers in Selma, Alabama, that Barack Obama's right to become president was challenged on racial grounds, and finally, that the Reverend Martin Luther King whose speech you all partially quote on his birthday in the month of January, was combative himself. He was jailed by whites, he was spied on by the white FBI, and finally assassinated by a white man. So, whereby Clark County and its citizens declare February 2023 to be whitewashed Black History Month. If we want to stop racism, we have to stand up to it, we have to call it out, and we have to stop it. Thank you very much. Uh, Madam Chair, I, I would like to immediately clarify some mis misstatements uh, that were just made. Uh, so first and foremost, we have done nothing 
differently than on any other proclamation. This is our proclamation. Uh, we have not asked the NAACP to rewrite theirs. They can put, publish any proclamation they wish. This is a proclamation under the signature of the Clark County Councilors. Uh, and I would tell the speaker, number one, we received nothing from the NAACP. I solicited a draft from them and our staff provided previous uh, proclamations that we have done to begin the process. <clears throat> I wanna celebrate Black History Month. I absolutely support the resolution that uh, we have finally drafted, but it's a normal process for us to eliminate typos, excessive language, um, excessive verbiage, re rephrasing, reformatting. It's a normal process. So um, the way you started out your public comment was just simply in error and divisive. Um, I'm just going to say that when we get to that item on the agenda, I'll add a little bit to uh, the discussion. Um, is there, are there any others relative to public comment staff? As frequently is the case. Chair, I do not see any hands online or anyone else in the hearing room for public comment. Okay, thank you very much. Old business, is there a motion for approval of the minutes of February 1? I move approval of the minutes. Second. Second. Thank you very much. Any discussion, additions, changes, edits, anything? Hearing none, they stand approved as drafted. So now let's turn down to the uh, item 2.2, which is the Black History Month proclamation. And I believe that you have that up on the screen before us. This is draft two, uh, draft one, was uh, talked about last week, and this is the one that we'll address this week, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the second draft. I shared this uh, proclamation draft, number two, um, with um, Yolanda Frazier, who is the president of this year's NAACP. Uh, she is a as lovely a person as could be, uh, just like working with Jasmine last year was the case. Um, and her comment after seeing it was, uh, the, the proclamation reads well, I approve of it, and yes, I'll be there to receive it for our NAACP Vancouver, Washington in the uh, meeting on February 21, 2023. She doesn't know at this time uh, whether she'll be able to come in person or virtually, but one or the other, she's looking forward to um, her presence to receive the proclamation. So uh, with that in mind, uh, if you wish to look at it, uh, make any motions or amendments. So uh, this is the draft that we saw last week. I mean, no, it is not. It no, is not. it is not. Uh, the draft that uh, we saw last week, all five counselors gave their feedback to Lindsay before she left on Friday. And she then in turn incorporated that feedback and created this, what I'm calling draft number two. Okay, it, yeah, that's what I was referring to, to the final draft that, that we received a few days ago or last week before she left. Yes, yes, that's Okay, right. so I would make a motion to approve that. Is there a second? I'll, I'll second, second it. Motion. Okay, great, <laughs> thank you. I'm gonna take your second, Councilor Marshall. Um, further discussion? Chair? Yes, go ahead, please. I just want to thank you for working with NAACP on the final language, so I appreciate that. No problem at all. That's uh, Councillor Medvigi was talking about 
the uh, customary approach. And I feel like that is a very appropriate customary approach, much as it is with um, Red Cross with the other proclamation that we'll be bringing forward on the 21st as well. So thank you for that comment, Councilor Marshall. Chair, I have further? a quick comment as well. Yes, go ahead. I'd, I'd also like you to thank you for that. And I guess I would say I'm, I'm a little bit frustrated here to find out a couple things this morning that I wasn't aware of. And one was that I had planned to ask what our um, what our communication with NAACP was, and and then I would appreciate getting that Columbian article. Have not seen that, was not aware of it. So, yeah. So this is the kind of conversation that would be great, not from here, but in private. And I did publicly state last week that I reached out to the president, who then responded back to me, telling me that the presidency had switched. They had a new president who I knew personally because I've worked with her on a number of projects. I do a lot of work in the black community and have great relations with the NAACP. So some of this angst that was just reverberated and amplified here this morning is all a false narrative. Um, so this is a normal process that was just twisted to sell newspapers. And it's really unfortunate. If you look on any web page, if you look on any web page from the White House, ma'am, you're interrupting. If you look on any web page from the White House to any governorship to any state or county, they all draft their own proclamations. They don't just simply put their signatures on what's proposed. There are some organizations, I think the Red Cross is one, that give us a very positive affirmation of the day they want recognized or the month they want recognized. And sometimes other than reformatting, correcting for typos and things like that, we may adopt them in whole cloth. This was one uh, that was inappropriate to do so just for the very reasons that we've seen uh, this morning. So I'm sorry for this angst, it shouldn't exist. We wanna celebrate this month, absolutely. Uh, and I wish that this process had started weeks earlier. Uh, normally we get a, a draft proclamation from an organization <clears throat> weeks in advance so that it can be done in a timely way. It wasn't until I personally emailed and said, hey, we wanna do this, do you wanna submit something? Uh, that we finally got something from yes, the Yes, and, and I recalled that conversation. I really appreciate you reaching out. I just was not aware of the the back, the conversation that came back to us. So that was what I was referring to. And it's unfortunate that a wonderful event like this is being stained by a, a stressful conversation, but I think it's important that we do have these conversations. Um, and it's also, it, it's, you know, this whole thing was also made a little bit more difficult because we had some transition in our uh, staff. So, yeah, look forward to it. Thank you. And I, I just don't think it... staff transition it got in the way of this at all. But um, anyway, I I don't have any further comments other than to say let's uh, please adopt it and hopefully we can get either the president or a representative here for the actual ceremony. And I will personally add, I have also for the last couple of years said, hey, please personalize it. Let's talk about some local families uh, that have contributed to the greater Vancouver, Clark County community and the history uh, of black history in our community. And, and please do that as part of the presentation. So they haven't quite taken us up on a historical perspective. Each of the counselors, this is a, because you're new, um, there was a book published by a local author of all the contributions of uh, the black community to Vancouver and Clark County. Uh, it was that that kind of sparked my interest in saying, hey, wh why don't we focus on some local families in Black History Month? So that still remains outstanding. Uh, hopefully, either the Historical Society or the NAACP or some other organization uh, will step up so that we can not only have a proclamation, but a presentation uh, as well. Uh, just to add a comment, I um, 
don't know what uh, the president, Yolanda Frazier, will uh, say in her acceptance. But one thing that I suggested is nice for us is if she highlights some of the upcoming or recent past events that uh, has been held by NAACP to recognize Black History Month. And for those that are still upcoming, um, when we have the, the dates and so on, uh, and they have a wonderful web page where we could find them, uh, they will uh, be something that perhaps we can put on our calendars and be there. So um, we've had the uh, motion and it's second. Is there any other comment before we vote? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. And it is passed unanimously. I thank you very much and uh, thank you, uh, Yolanda, for your participation in uh, making this happen in a, a positive way for NAACP. That is our goal. Uh, board assignments is next on the agenda. Kathleen Otto. Yes, thank you, Chair. So we have a couple board assignments that I wanted to bring up this morning. Uh, the first one is the Regional Disaster Preparedness Organization, RDPO. Um, this was one that we were monitoring a potential cost increase that has been uh, minimized. So it's a minimal increase that, um, potentially a minimal increase that we will see. And so I am recommending that we uh, have a counselor join that group um, they do meet um, quarterly, I believe, in the midday. There is a hybrid approach um, or hybrid meetings as well. And, and have that counselor who's attending with our staff, Mike Lewis, who's our emergency coordinator, um, to determine over the next year if it's something that we want to continue to participate in the years ahead. So I would like to ask if a counselor is willing to join that particular board. I think I can cover that one. Thank that's you, Councilor Young. First, that's if, remind me if I'm correct, make sure it's the first Thursday from three to 4.30. So I think they just updated their time. Uh, so it's quarterly on the third Friday in the middle of the day. You wanna recent your? Yeah, I'm gonna need to, unfortunately. Okay. okay. Is there an appropriate staff member that could be an alternate in case. Yes, Mike conflict. Lewis, um, our emergency coordinator can certainly attend and report back to council and, you know, they do vote. So as a paying member, we do have um, a vote uh, when they're looking at things, but we can certainly have Mike come back if there is going to be a vote on anything and present that to council. So I can commit to uh, taking that responsibility on, but whoever my alternate is, just know that I'm probably going to be calling on on the alternate. I will I commit to being there more often than I'm not, but that is a very difficult time for me, so I'll do my best. Is there any other counselor that uh, is interested but doesn't have that conflict? Hearing none, I believe that Councillor Young, we will look to you for your leadership with that. And uh, thank you for your, your volunteering. And if we have a conflict, if you know ahead of time, we can bring it back to council time. And if nobody else is available, we can have Mike um, speak on your behalf. Thank you. The second one is the Southwest Washington Clear Agen Air Agency. I just wanted to confirm um, something that I didn't know, apparently when our prior chair left, um, the council at the time asked Dr. Melnick to be the representative on that, co that committee, and he has been attending regularly over the last year um, and actually was voted as chair for this year. So the question for council is, do you wanna have a counselor go back on and be part of that organization, or are you wanting Dr. Melnick to continue in his capacity? So my only comments, uh, Madam Chair, is one, I never recall any 
feedback from any uh, meetings that the chair may have attended back then. Uh, my only concern with Southwest Washington Clean Air is uh, when we allow burning, um, either people are ignoring uh, the no burn days or, and I have checked occasionally, sometimes Southwest Washington doesn't issue, uh, in my mind, the appropriate warning when air is stagnant. I think it's a health issue. And I think Dr. Melnick is perfect uh, to fulfill that role on our behalf. Um, I mean, I, I just can't volunteer for any more uh, committees. And I appreciate Councilor Young just standing up for this uh, last one. So I, I am endorsing Dr. Melnick continuing because I think it's a, a more perfect fit. Other comments? Are, are you looking for a counselor as well to participate? It, it would actually be um, in lieu of Dr. Melnick. Okay. I think Dr. Melnick is perfect. Okay. Do I hear a third one saying that? I agree. I think Dr. Melnick is a good fit for that particular committee. Okay. I hope and he I hears will... this discussion. <laughs> And I can certainly remind him if things come up in that uh, committee that's important to share with council, he can probably um, have that on Board of Health agenda uh, for any necessary updates. So thank you. Well, thank you, um, Kathleen. That's exactly what I was going to say. Every counselor, and that includes now Dr. Melnick, is expected to report back to council on what occurred at the meetings, and we'll expect that of him as well. So uh, I'll I'll tell him if you want me to. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. He's been asking me if he has to stay on or not. So, and he's uh, more than happy to. He's more than happy great. to. That's great. Um, and then the, and then the third one, um, I anticipate we're going to be pushing out. It's on the Calips Tribal Foundation. Uh, we did talk about this, I believe, last week, and it was asked by council to bring in representatives uh, from the foundation. Um, to present their desire to not have two counselors on and maybe appointing one from the community members. Unfortunately, the members that were invited are unavailable today. So we can reschedule that discussion when they are available. Thank you. And is there anything else about board assignments? Not for me, thank you. Okay, how about new business? Nothing? Counselor reports. Um, just briefly, since we were just on uh, board assignments, and, and I know that there were some conflicts yesterday on the RTC, uh, but uh, they did name uh, the director of, of CTRAN and his vice uh, to stand on uh, JPAC as well. Um, we also welcomed uh, new members uh, to the RTC, and one of them is the chair of, of JPAC. Uh, so, uh, and I did clarify at that meeting that it would come up during our annual retreat when we do board assignments, whether or not we would ask to get that seat back uh, on JPAC. So it would be a, a year to year uh, position. Uh, and I think everybody was good with that. So I, since we were just talking about board assignments and RTC just met and talked about that issue uh, yesterday. Thank you, Councillor Medvigi. And was there anything from the Lower Columbia Fish Recovery Board uh, this month so far? Uh, well, we we it is one of the most active boards I sit on, and so we have the uh, the recovery grant program coming up, and there's a site tours. Uh, as well as uh, an introduction to the grant process coming up. I don't know if I'm going to participate in that or not. Normally staff does that with some volunteers from the Lower Columbian Fish Recovery Board. I would also say, and I think uh, Councilor Marshall is joining in, we're going to go up to the uh, Richfield Pits uh, and tour with the estuary as well as the Lower Columbian Fish Recovery Board. Um, we have an opportunity this legislative session to completely round out and complete the funding uh, needed for this much needed progress uh, process. Um, you know, the East Fork 
of the Lewis River is a unique river in that it has all wild fish, there's no dams on it, and we've spent decades trying to improve uh, its fish bearing capability. And in parts and places, it's doing really well. These pits um, are an amazing hindrance. You know, they're in old quarries. Uh, they create shallow pools. Uh, they get warm. They kill spawning fish. Uh, so it's an important project. Uh, the issue is simply if the legislature funds 50 million, which it traditionally does for floodplains, uh, we won't make the list. Uh, we're number 11 on the priority list of the grants, and we won't make the list, which then means that the entire f funding package fails to fund it. If the legislature was to fund 70 million, then we would make the cutoff, and all the money from the lower Columbian Fish Recovery Board grant, from our conservation, the Clark County Conservation, as well as the estuary, there's, you know, pieces of the funding pie coming from all over. Uh, all of that won't, it just won't completely finance the project. So I'm hoping that we can get some standalone local project money to make up the gap, and that gap is about $7 million uh, if we weren't able to make the <coughs> number 11 position, uh, if the legislature didn't fund the full $70 million. So anyway, we're gonna have that site tour um, I don't remember when, but it's coming up soon. Um, hopefully it won't be pouring down rain, uh, but Sue Marshall and I are gonna put on our waders and go out there and take a look. I've, I've flown over it many times, and the first thing that strikes you is, oh my gosh, we need to fix this. And it's all a, re all a result of man-made uh, quarrying uh, that was never properly reclaimed. Um, so it's time to fix it, and I'm hoping that as a county, we can kind of push this through. I, I have also reached out to our local legislative delegation and gotten some positive responses back from uh, some um, that they will jump on it and they'll try to pursue it. Anyway, that's, that's kind of the highlight of the Lower Columbian Fish Recovery Board. Obviously, they're full behind it. They wanna see it succeed and, and they did award a sizable grant uh, to partner with the estuary and Clark County uh, to see, see this over the top. Sorry for that long rendition. <laughs> Councillor Marshall, is there anything from the uh, North Country EMS? Yes, uh, I have a couple things to report. Uh, actually, they were doing interviews to uh, replace the chief up there, so I got a good opportunity to learn quite a bit about the history and and uh, find out about. Brian Shirley, they uh, uh, elevated from within, so it's a, really a, a dedicated bunch up there in a tight-knit community, and they're very proud of the services they're able to provide. And then also, I uh, uh, attended Fire District 10 board and had the privilege of swearing in Sam Arola, uh, who's uh, just stepped down uh, to retire. He was chief up there for, well, I don't think he was chief for 47 years, but he worked for 47 years for the fire department up there. And uh, he uh, is now serving on the uh, board of fire commissioners. So I was able to swear him in as well as Kim Baldwin, who's the secretary. So they also gave me uh, a good lowdown on the, the history and the needs up in that community. Very nice. Uh, Councillor Belcott, how about the Legislative Steering Committee? Um, I was not in attendance of that meeting on Friday because I was out of town. Um, but I did want to mention that I um, had my CTRAN orientation meeting prior to leaving out of town. And that was pretty interesting to see um, who their primary writers are. They do a lot of work with the high schools and the kids in the community. So that was pretty cool to see. Um, and they were talking about potential and future forecasts for ridership. They talked about their vine project um, and kind of all the construction that they're currently going through um, and expanding services to Highway 99. So it was really interesting to see all the things that they're doing and involved in. And it should be a interesting first meeting for me to go to. 
Councillor Young, how about WASAC Board of Directors? That was an interesting one and, and a, a long one. And there was, a, I would say the most interesting conversation that took place was how the board is formed, like who has a seat. And each individual county has the ability to pay their dues and have a seat on the WASAC board. And King County made an appeal to have stronger representation on that board because they are the highest paying dues member. Um, we are, Clark County's right there in the middle. I think we, we contribute a significant amount of funds, but King County still is more than three times what we contribute. And then you have small counties like Garfield County that only contribute 7,000. So you're, you know, they, they contribute almost 100 times more than the smallest county. So, I thought it was a very fascinating, fascinating conversation, and I felt like um, the issue of equity was highly at play during this discussion. I thought it was very interesting how the more dense, the more pop, you know, the larger population a county has, the higher their dues are, and they still have the same voice at the table as everyone else actually they they do i believe have two seats so they do have a little bit heavier weight but not certainly representative of their population so and i understand you know they're looking at it from a perspective of you know we pay they pay five hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year and what are they getting from it because they're often opposed to what is what they are you know what what's important to them they often lose uh, as far as the um, support from WASAC. And so I thought it was a, a very interesting discussion. I don't know how it will move forward, but it, it, one of the things that I do appreciate about the existing funding structure of it is that it does give the traditionally unheard, so the small counties, it does give them a voice at the table. So I don't know what the right answer is. I don't know how it will play out in the end, but. It certainly was an interesting conversation and it was a very civil discussion. Everybody aired out their grievances and we'll see how it moves forward. It was not resolved during the meeting. Other counselor reports. Okay, any work session requests? None this morning. Thank you. And how about policy issues? None this morning. And now we're ready for executive session, we, of which we'll have two. Uh, one of 20 minutes authorized by RCW 42.30.110. One, uh, section I. And the other, a collective bargaining issue for 10 minutes. Um, we will, that because that totals 30 minutes, come back into council time after I'd say about 32 minutes in order to adjourn uh, the council time session. And <clears throat> my understanding is that we have no after reports or after action, after following, I should say, the executive sessions. Is that correct, Leslie? That is correct, Chair Bowerman. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Madam Great. Chair. Yes. This has been such an efficient meeting. I just wanted to take another minute because with Lindsay not here, she would have reported on uh, the next step on broadband. So I just wanted to briefly mention that because uh, we're going to be meeting uh, as a county with uh, our public works representative, uh, with port representatives, and that's all of them as well as uh, the Washington State University Extension Service, which is acting on behalf of Commerce uh, to get the federal funding passed through uh, to local counties. Uh, so, and we were invited by WSU to that meeting. So I think we have a leg up. We are kind of at the, at the front of the pack here, uh, and hopefully we'll see some real progress and see what WSU needs from us. There are some small grants available. That was one of the, the things that was teed up that I talked to the manager about to basically prepare the map that we need to submit for the upcoming grant round. Um, so that's the part we need to figure out together with the ports. 
Um, obviously, the Port of Kamaswashu will just concluded theirs, and their report was okay, um, but it really didn't provide the answer to the mail that uh, the applic grant application is going to require. Uh, for this um, <coughs> initial grant, it's a one-page submission um, that I'm hoping we can figure out uh, how we can accomplish that so we can uh, best position ourselves as a county uh, to, to get the most out of this, these grant rounds. Councillor, are you attending the broadband meetings? Uh, I'm uh, after your prompting. I did get on the list. Um, I don't think it made it to my calendar. I don't know if I missed it or not, but I am on the list to attend as a stakeholder Great. for the for Wasac. Thank you. Well, I may have prompted, but you were very responsive, and I thank you for that. I think that that the representation there is key for the reasons that you just shared this morning. So, okay, thank you. Um, I think we're ready now for executive session. We uh, it's nine thirty six. Uh, let's return at ten ten in order to. Um, uh, be back into council time to adjourn that meeting. Thank you so much. And counselors, I'll see you in executive session in a moment. Hello, the council is extending executive session for 10 more minutes and we will be returning at 1020. Thank you. Council is extending executive session for five more minutes and will be returning at 1025. Thank you. Executive session has been extended for another 10 minutes and the council will be returning at 1035. Thank you all. This, as you know, is Wednesday, February 8. We have been in two executive sessions as your Clark County uh, Council, and we uh, have no after action from those sessions. So we now return to council time for the singular purpose of adjournment. This meeting is adjourned. Bye-bye.